Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, I'm going to give Stetson Bennett my vote. Steve Weish talks about maybe an under the radar impactful rookie. And should the Braves make a run at an Avenger? It's all next. Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. We welcome you into a Tuesday edition of Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. We ask you to head over to YouTube.com, put Locked On Sports Atlanta into the search browser, hit that subscribe button when you find our page. Over 2,500 people now. Really appreciate you growing that uh, community for us. Leave us a uh, comment there. Of course, we're also free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. Leave us a five-star review and then give me a follow on my personal Twitter page. That would be at jmch316 so i had a chance uh if you got a chance to be on youtube yesterday i was at the sec media day is going to be there uh all week long for uh the event and um you know look it's always a fun time there and it really is the kind of unofficial kickoff to the college football season when sec media days rolls along now one of the things that is fun about being i guess part of the media although i don't really consider myself a, a media member unlike the Randy McMichaels and Hugh Douglas's of the world. I'm more of an entertainer, but we do get a chance to vote for the preseason all SEC teams by being there. And I had this discussion and, and I asked you all on, on our YouTube page yesterday. If we know that Bryce Young is without question, he's the Heisman Trophy winner, right? He's without question the number one quarterback in the SEC returning, right? So as far as first team all SEC quarterback goes, It'll be a unanimous vote. I can't even imagine somebody voting for somebody other than Bryce Young to be the unanimous first team all SEC quarterback. But who is number two? And the thing that's interesting about this year's SEC class is there are a lot of really good quarterbacks, and there are a lot of quarterbacks that have very high side potential. There are a lot of quarterbacks that, if they can take that next step, could certainly put themselves in into discussions. You know, there's Will Levis from Kentucky, who some people think is going to be a top 10 NFL draft pick. Some people think Anthony Richardson can be a top 10 NFL draft pick. If you look at Spencer Rattler coming over to South Carolina now, a couple of years ago, I had him as the Heisman favorite. And, you know, a lot of people thought by this time he would be the number one overall draft pick, right? I mean, there are a lot of guys that are in that mix. My vote... And you can call me a homer, but I'm going to go with Stetson Bennett. I think Stetson Bennett has earned the right. Look, is he dynamic, flashy, this, that, and the other? And I know people love to call him a game manager, but he did make enough plays last year for Georgia. You can't just game manage your way to a national title. Yeah, but they're defense. I get it. And you still have to make plays. He had to make plays against Alabama. Now, look, in their game against Alabama in the SEC championship game where it didn't go very well and they couldn't keep up offensively. Yeah, he couldn't make enough plays. But when it came to Michigan, when it came to Alabama in the national championship game, when he was asked to make plays, he made big throws in that game. And again, you can't dumb your way to 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns in the world of college football. So when I start to look at the landscape, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about the landscape here and, and some more thoughts about Stenson Ben in just a second. But I want to talk to you about my friends over at Dave. Listen, we always get in these little crunches, right? We're running a little bit short of money. I'm literally just getting back from vacation, you know, over the weekend and getting back in town and spending all the money to be at the beach. And it was great. But I'm looking at the bank account and saying, whoops, whoa, wait a second. You know, I'm going to need myself a little bit of extra money uh, here to try to just get through this, you know, this particular week and stuff like that. Dave is an opportunity for you to be able to kind of meet those short-term needs with a banking app that can help you to get as much as $500 instantly with their extra cash program. So listen, you got to get some gas in the you know, fuel tank. You got to get some food, whatever it is. We all understand. We're all there. We've all been there as far as a little bit of financial you know, instability here. But Dave is one of those apps that you can download that gives you a chance to find that financial relief in the short term. And again, you can get as much as $500 instantly. 
So what I want you to do is I want you to download the Dave app from your app store right now. That's Dave, D-A-V-E, the Dave app right now. And if you sign up for their extra cash account, download the app, sign up for the extra cash account, you could get up to as much as $500 instantly. So terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal, instant transfer fees apply, banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. But that's Dave, D-A-V-E, Dave is the app. Go there now, download it, sign up for extra cash, and you might be in line to pick up an extra 500 bucks to help you get through the week. Now, when you start to look at the landscape of, of quarterbacks, I do think that there are some guys that have definite ability. If they take that next step, the ceiling starts to get higher. The Hendon Hookers, K.J. Jefferson, Will Rogers. There are a lot of talented guys. Again, we talked about Rattler's a guy who you know I thought would be in the Heisman mix and certainly thought about being a top 10 NFL draft pick. Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, those are guys that are looked at as top 10 NFL draft picks. But there is something to being the guy that led his team to a national title. And again, I understand how good their defense was and how historically good it was. But it wasn't like they won all those games three to nothing. Okay. It wasn't like they won six to three all season long. Stetson Bennett made enough plays and he's done enough that there's no reason to think that a guy coming back on a national championship contending team. And I do think that, let's say, worst case scenario, Georgia's going to be the number three team in the nation. That's the worst case scenario. And I've got no problem if you tell me that Alabama's one, Ohio State is two, and Georgia's three. I get that. But there's a reason why Georgia, even though they lost a lot of defensive personnel, and yes, I understand they've got a lot of returning guys, and they're probably going to have three more top 10 picks off their defense and Ringo and Smith and, and Jalen Carter, right? They're going to have three more guys drafted really high this year in the draft. But part of that is the fact that Stetson Bennett did come back. They have a lot of weapons. Obviously, Brock Bowers is maybe the best pass catcher in all of the SEC. Well, part of that is Stetson had to get the football to him. I think Stetson Bennett has earned the right and earned my vote that I feel like that there is a known quantity, and I feel like that he's a guy that if he ups his game just even a little bit, Again, we're talking about a guy with 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns last year. That's not game managing. Uh, even in the world of college football, 3,000 yards, and, and by the way, he didn't play, he didn't start all 12 games last year, right, during the regular season. <laughs> Remember that JT Daniels was the guy who started the Clemson game, right? And then JT Daniels started against, what, South Carolina, and they brought Stetson in. He did have a bad pick, but, you know, when JT Daniels went down, that's when Stetson took over and led them the rest of the way. So I'm going to give my vote to Stetson Bennett. And I think part of it is just when there's no easy, clear-cut guy. Because you can make a case. I've got no problem if you make me a case for Hendon Hooker, K.J. Jefferson, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, Spencer Rattler. Okay? There's a lot of guys in that mix that if you told me you're going to make a case for them being second team all on CC, I listen. I, I, I would listen to it. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that my vote's going to go to the guy that I know has already won a national championship, has decided to come back for another year, and has a whole crap ton of offensive personnel around him. From running backs to wide receivers to tight ends to five-star recruits, they're going to have a tremendous offensive line. In fact, they may be one of the top one, two, three offensive lines in the country this year. I think there is something to that. And I think the reputation that Bennett has gotten at times is warranted. I, I won't disagree that at times it was, hey, you know, he maybe is sort of a game manager, but you look at his yards per attempt, again, 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns in not a complete full season out there. He did enough that I think he's earned the right that I'm going to make him my vote for the SEC second team quarterback. And I think when you take about a jumbled mess of guys and there are a whole bunch of guys that you can make arguments for. I think the thing that I look at is the fact that who's the biggest winner, because that still is what it's all about in college football. Who's the biggest winner? That hands down goes to Stetson Bennett at the end of the day. All right, when we come back, Steve Weish, talking about the Atlanta Falcons, says there's one under-the-radar rookie to really watch out for. We'll talk about that, and will he be right? It's up next on Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports. 
Back with you on Hitting Hard with John Chuck. We're here on Locked on Sports Atlanta. Head to YouTube.com. Find Locked on Sports Atlanta in your search browser. When you get there, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. Download us today. Leave us a five-star review. And, of course, follow me on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. Steve Weish from Atlanta Falcons, NFL Network, right? I mean, he was a former beat writer for the Atlanta Falcons. Talked about one of the the under-the-radar rookies for the Atlanta Falcons that he thinks might be sneaky, makes the biggest impact in this rookie class, and that is their fifth-round draft pick, the running back out of uh, BYU, excuse me, almost said LSU, BYU, Tyler Algier. Now, he brought up the fact about his production in college. Last couple of years in college. 2,700 yards, 36 rushing touchdowns. He is a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield. And then he brings up the fact that the Falcons were willing to move on from their starting running back last year of Mike Davis. Now, let me say like this. Yes, Davis was their starter, but he only started eight games last year. And to be honest with you, for the production that he gave you last year, that was an easy decision because you picked up two and a half million dollars on the cap. With all due respect, that cutting Mike Davis was one of the easier. I, I called this at the beginning of the year. That was one of the easiest decisions the Falcons were going to make was moving on from Mike Davis. Whether they had a backup plan or didn't have a backup plan, saving two and a half million dollars for a guy who didn't even average four yards per attempt. Literally, to just give you some perspective, Mike uh, Mike Davis's rushing yards per attempt and receiving yards per attempt when combined wouldn't even get you a first down. So if he runs it and catches it in back-to-back plays, he doesn't pick up enough yards to get you a first down. That was an easy call. So can Tyler Algier, and here's what Mike Davis's stats were last year. In 17 games and eight starts, 138 carries, 503 yards, three rushing touchdowns. He also caught 44 passes out of the backfield, 259 yards with one touchdown. So can Tyler Algier be, say, let's call it 760 yards and four touchdowns of offense from scrimmage? I think that's realistic. I I, I think that's a realistic number. And I don't think it's going to be all asked on Tyler Algier. Yes, I mean, Cordell Patterson is their other main starting running back. But I think that they're hoping that whether it's Kadri Allison or Williams or one of these other guys, they can find a role. and, And look, I've said I, I would like to see more of Kadri Allison. I'd like to see him get into a more regular rotation. If nothing else, let's find out if he's supposed to be here long term or if his time in Atlanta just needs to end, right? It's crap or get off the pot time for Kadri Allison. So if they can find a role for him to kind of take some of the pressure off of a Tyler Algier, because again, you know, when you ask a rookie to handle a big workload, and, I, and again, when I say big workload, I mean, even 150 carries is probably a decent sized workload. And I do expect that the Falcons are going to run the football more. We spent a lot of time talking about the fact that Matt Ryan's average pass attempt season the last four years is 600. Mariota's best ever pass, ever pass attempt season is 453. So there is a big discrepancy between what the Falcons averaged over the last handful of years and what Mariota's peak performance has been. So I expect them to run the football more. So everybody's going to have to probably take some more of the workload on, and they're going to have to probably find a third running back to be in this mix as well. Now, we'll talk more about this in just a minute, but I want to tell you about my friends over at betonline.net, right? We got all kinds of things going on. Man, you had the home run derby last night. Didn't go so well for Ronnie, but home run derby, all-star game. We're going to get right back into regular season, Major League Baseball. You got MLS. You got golf you just had your final major wrapping up uh, over the weekend right boxing mma you got all kinds of things going on and oh yeah don't look now but coming right around the corner is both preseason regular season nfl and college football will be here before you know it as well betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information you need reviews you need news you need notes you need wagering information including live betting esports scores betonline.net is your place to go Fastest, easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports events and all your favorite teams. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends going on. Learn more about the action. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Now, 
Can Tyler Algier be a guy who, more importantly than what his total yards are or will be, a guy that averages over four yards per carry? Because that's sort of the magic threshold in the NFL, right? That's sort of where the Falcons have really struggled between their running backs and their offensive line is to get guys who are over four yards per attempt. Because if you're not going to be a running back that's over four yards per attempt in the NFL, your ability to effectively run the football is going out the window. Even Cordero Patterson literally was right at four yards per attempt. So if the running game for the Atlanta Falcons is going to be better, more than just how often they run it, more than just what the accumulation of yards is, I look at the yards per attempt. You know, if we're not an offense, uh, running game, offensive line combination, that can't get you up and over at least four yards per attempt, you're not going to be able to run the football effectively. So that's what I'm interested to see because Algier can get through the tackles and he can be very much a red zone. You know, again, I don't play fantasy football, but, you know, for the fantasy football nudniks uh, of the world out there, if you're talking about, hey, who's a guy that maybe could scarf up some touchdowns and things like that, I think Algier can be that guy. Guy had 36 touchdowns the last couple of years at BYU. And look, they say what you will, but, you know, they, they've had a pretty good passing offense there, right? Remember Zach Wilson a couple of years ago? But even in that year, you know, Algier ran for like 11, 1,200 yards and scored a whole handful of touchdowns. So he's a guy who might scarf up some touchdowns down in the red zone. And I think that's what they hope for, right? I think he's more built and ideally a fit for running between the tackles down close, you know, by the goal line. And again, we've talked about if this offense is going to figure some things out. They have to run the football effectively. They have to be able to run it in the red zone. They have to be able to find a way to score more touchdowns, right? I think Algier can be a guy that helps them out in all of that. If you told me he's 150 carries, 600 yards, somewhere around in that range, okay, that gives you four yards per attempt, I'd take that all day long. And, and maybe half a dozen touchdowns to go along with it. 150 carries, 600 yards, six touchdowns, I'd take that all day long out of Tyson Algier. I take that all day, or Tyler Algier, excuse me. I take that all day long out of Algier. So I like what Steve Weiss is saying. I, I, I think that there is some merit uh, in that. Um, I think that there's no doubt that given the way that this offense wants to try to move in a different direction where we're going to move away from huck it all over the yard and we don't have all the offensive personnel. And again, we've talked about the fact that they have three of the nine worst pass blocking offensive linemen in the NFL, trying to become a more power running football team and play more to the strengths, hopefully, of Mayfield or Hennessy or McGarry or whatever the combination of the offensive linemen that, that are in question is going to be. Algier is going to have to be a big part of that. Now, I don't think Algier is going to be a guy who they're going to hand the ball off 250 times and and just you know run him like crazy. I don't think that this coaching staff is going to do that, and I still think they want to get the ball in Cordell Patterson's hands. I do think that they want to have sort of a, I don't want to say running back by committee. That's what it will probably look like at times, but I do think that they want to mix three guys into that. I do think that to get more rushing attempts, it's not just take one or two guys, and let's face it, Cordell Patterson is not built to be a guy to run it 250 times, right? The fact that he ran it 100, uh, 153 times, last year, you know, was probably about where his max is. I mean, maybe a little more, maybe he can get to, you know, 170 or something like that, but certainly you don't expect him to be a 200 carry type of running back. So Algier is going to be an interesting guy to watch. I do like the idea that he's maybe a little bit under the radar. If you're a fantasy football guy, he might be a guy that scarfs you up some touchdowns out there, but if I can get 150 for 600 and six touchdowns, I'll be happy as a clam if I can if I can get that out of Algier. All right, when we come back, should the Braves make a run at an Avenger? We'll talk about that next. Hitting hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On. It's hitting hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Head to YouTube.com, find Locked On Sports Atlanta in the search browser, subscribe to our page, leave us a comment. Free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms to download as well, including Spotify and Odyssey. Leave us a five star review, and of course, follow me on my personal Twitter page at. JMCH316. One name that I have seen linked to should the Braves make a run at here recently is a starting pitcher. And again, he's an Avenger, right? It's Thor, also known as Noah Syndergaard. Now, Syndergaard pitches for the Los Angeles Angels, right? He came over from the New York Mets, 
Um, you know, it was part of that group of New York Mets that they thought were going to be the next revolution of guys, right? DeGrom and Syndergaard and all those guys, right? And, you know, so far for the Angels this year, he's made 14 starts, 5-7 and seven on the year, a 4.00 ERA, 74 and a third innings pitched, 69 hits, 20 uh, walks. He's given up nine homers, 58 strikeouts. So just to give you some perspective, he is – seven strikeouts per nine innings, not quite three strikeouts per walk. And, you know, his whip is pretty good. It's a 1.197. Now, Syndergaard is obviously in the final year of his contract, so he becomes a free agent at the end of the year. He's a $21 million pitcher this year. Obviously, at this point, the Braves would be picking up less than half that salary out there, right? So, you know, put it on a per per prorated per game basis or anything like that. And that'll give you an idea about where he's at out there. Is that a guy that's going to come in and help the Braves? I don't know. I mean, look at, you start looking at Syndergaard's numbers. He, he's, he's at his lowest strikeout per nine inning total of his entire career. Even last year when he only made a couple starts, but even take the couple of years before that, he was nine strikeouts per nine innings and above. And then of course, you know, his first three years when he was a top 10 Cy Young and a top five rookie of the year, right? He was up over 10 strikeouts per nine innings. So for whatever reason, and let's be honest, none of us watch Noah Syndergaard on a regular basis. Ain't nobody around here watching Angels baseball on any sort of regular basis. But whatever's going on, you know, his swing and miss stuff is going away. Um, it's also a situation where he's given up nine homers in 74 innings. That's not the worst number in the world, but again, you talk about a guy, if, if you project a guy to be on, let's say a 250 inning pace, you know, he's mid, mid to high twenties, almost early thirties, you know, as far as that goes, I, I don't know. I, I look, here's what I think about the Braves starting rotation. I, I think, and, and what's going to be fascinating is really watch Spencer Strider coming out of the gate after the All-Star game, a few days to rest, right? Let's see what his first two or three starts look like coming out after the All-Star game. He did not have a good a good start the other day. I think it was four innings and five earned runs um, over the weekend, you know, as they were wrapping up that series against the Nats. Again, it's a hiccup and things like that. But we have talked about the amount of innings that he's pitched, where he's sort of at in his career, where he hasn't pitched very much. Obviously, he was just drafted a couple of years ago. He played with four different organizations for the Braves last year, only pitched 94 innings, right? He's close to 70 innings now. So watching his next few starts coming out of the break, and the Braves are going to start getting away from some of this 20 games in 20 days, 17 games in 17 days stretch, right? I think that the, the only big stretch they have in the second half of the season, and I say second half, quote unquote, after the All-Star break, is I think they have one 13-game uh, stretch in 13 game, 13 day period that they have to play. So there'll be some opportunity to not have to have Strider in there all the time. If you want to start to kind of bump them a little bit because you'll have some days off, it will work itself out. So he's going to be interesting to watch. Obviously, they got to get Ian Anderson because look, Ian Anderson last year may have been their best postseason pitcher, right? And they're absolutely counting on him to be a part of all of that. Do the Braves need to bring in a Noah Syndergaard? Do they need to bring in Thor? I don't think so. That's not a name that interests me or intrigues me. And I really don't think that starting pitching, in all honesty, if we're talking about a guy to make a random start here or there, I'd rather they dip back down in their minor league system, right? You're locked down with Freed. You're locked down with Wright. You're locked down with Morton. You're going to give Strider and Ian Anderson all the rope in the world to do what they have to do, right? So, you know, again, I'm not super excited about the idea of this. We'll talk more about it in just a second. But I want to tell you about my friends over at Coffee AM, coffeeam.com. You know how passionate I am about the, these folks. Unbelievable company, best small batch coffee brewer in America, located right here in Georgia, up in the Canton area. They're an online coffee company. Coffeeam.com is the website. Check out their full range of coffees, teas, gift sets. You like organic coffees, you like flavored coffees, everything that you want is available at coffeeam.com. I always talk about, I got that care package that they sent me, open that bad boy up, and I'm telling you, just the aroma alone, you could use that as a fragrance scent, right? I mean, it's so good. The coffee smells so, so good from coffeeam.com. 
But we've got a special deal going right now for our Locked On Sports Atlanta listeners. If you head to coffeeam.com, coffeeam.com backslash locked on, go there today and take a look at the full menu of coffees, teas, gift sets. They got a wide range of products and gift ideas that you have available to you. Coffeeam.com backslash locked on is where you want to go. When you get to checkout, I want you to use the coupon code locked on, L O C K E D O N. That's L O C K E D O N. Use locked on at checkout and get 15% off your first order of whatever coffees, teas, gift sets, whatever your package that you're putting together is. 15% off that first order simply by using locked on at checkout. L O C K E D O N. Coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Use that co- coupon code, excuse me, locked on at checkout, and you'll get 15% off. Best small batch coffee brewer in America, located right here in Georgia. Love those folks out there. So, look, I don't think the Braves need to necessarily invest themselves in another starting pitcher. I would much rather they dip down in their minor league system and find somebody there, Tucker Davidson, Bryce, whatever. You know, if you want to give a Noah another shot, especially given the fact that we feel like we have five guys who are pretty well set in the rotation. I just don't think that Syndergaard is a guy that I need to bring in, and I don't know what value that he brings at this point. He doesn't strike out a lot of guys. He didn't get a ton of guys out. He's given up plenty of runs, right? And I don't know enough about the ballpark in California, and I call him the California Angel. Sorry, I'm not changing my tune on that. California Angel, I don't know what their ballpark is like. I don't know how much of a band box is. I know Tani hits a 1,000 homers there, and Trout hits a 1,000 homers there. So if you're putting them in a ballpark, that certainly is hitter-friendly, and I think Truist Park is a hitter-friendly ballpark. It may not be the band box that some of these other stadiums are, but I think it's a hitter-friendly ballpark. Put them in a, in a stadium like that, I don't know how much value you get. Left-handed hitters will probably eat him up in, in that stadium. So I've seen his name linked a bunch to the Braves. I get the idea. You roll the dice, right? You don't have a ton invested. He's on a final year of a contract. You have nothing in it. And again, at this point, you know, after they traded Pache and Waters and everybody else, I'm not concerned about prospects, right? We're in win now mode. I just don't know that Syndergaard is what we need. I think more than anything, I think it's watching Strider coming out of the all-star game and what he looks like. I think it's getting Ian Anderson consistent and getting him back on track and especially, you know, kind of building back up to getting him ready for postseason baseball. And again, if I need a start here and a start there for a guy or whatever like that, because I don't think they're sitting any of their five starters, even if I have to rest stride or something like that, I'd much rather let me try out Tucker Davidson. Let me try out Bryce Elder. Let me try out Uskar Noah. Let me try out one of those guys. Let me give one of those guys another go around. I don't think they could be any necessarily worse or better. And I don't know that Syndergaard is a guy that you're ready to catch lightning in a bottle. I just don't look at him and think that he's the same pitcher anymore. So listen, you may be a fan of the Avengers and things like that, but probably looking for, you know, more bullpen help than, than starter help. So I'm going to say pass on Noah Syndergaard. All right. We thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Chuckery your first listen every day. Make our friends over at ATL Day Ones your second listen every day. My friends Jarvis Davis and Tanitra Batiste talking about all things in the heart of the city of Atlanta, covering dogs, Falcons, Braves, Hawks, whatever you want, all kinds of topics around the Atlanta sports scene. Free and available on our YouTube page at Locked On Sports Atlanta. Free and available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. And as always, I ask you to give me a follow on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. Be at SEC Media Days. Be looking out on YouTube.com for some videos a little bit later on today. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta.